This is the Precision One uh, stove. It's uh, brand new out. It's 84.3% efficiency. Um, it's a cast iron lid, cast iron door and steel body. Now the unique thing about this stove is that uh, we have an advanced combustion system. Similar to a lot of stoves, we have primary air coming from the front. We have a preheated secondary air which comes from an a opening in the bottom of the stove which is controlled by this lever. Air then comes up, preheats along the inside of the body and then comes out over the glass as, as, as warm preheated air. But the, the good thing about this stove is that the remainder of that air goes to the rear of the chamber and comes up through a cast iron plate. We believe we're the first to use a cast iron plate. Now, the difference between steel and cast iron, steel uh, heats up quicker but it loses its heat uh, at a faster rate. Cast iron takes longer to heat up but cast iron will hold temperature for a longer period of time. Using the best of both worlds of the steel and cast iron with this stove, we've developed a cast iron tertiary plate at the back of the stove. We believe we're the first to use a cast iron tertiary air plate. The benefits of this uh, is giving us a much higher efficiency. We have uh, air coming in through, through the bottom, coming through the rear and going up through the, the cast iron tertiary plate. With a higher temperature whenever the stove is starting to cool down because it's cast iron, which means that we're, 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 we're getting a much higher efficiency rate. The stove is one of the cleanest burning stoves in the market. The glass stays beautifully clear. But what I'm going to do is just show you how easy it is to light. With a single match, I've just got um, a traditional fire lighter in here. We've used uh, some small kindling logs, some sticks. Once the fire lighter is lit, there's a couple of different ways of lighting the stove. This is a traditional lighting method. I'm just going to open the primary air. The primary air really is only used for lighting the stove or for burning mineral fuel. And also my air control here, I can increase that. I'm going to keep the door ajar for the first uh, minute or so, just again, just to give, give a little bit more air into the chamber, which will assist in, in the lighting. So we can see that, um, that the flames are actually drawn to the opening in the door here because the air is coming through. Uh, what I'm going to do is just close this. Again, everyone's draw slightly differently. We're at a five inch flue that's going into a, a, an insulated uh, flue pipe, a, a twin wall flue pipe. So we have um, quite a good draw here, but also uh, it's, it's, a, it's an efficient system because we're not uh, installing it into an incorrect diameter. Now again depending on your draw will depend on excuse me will depend on the length of time that you want to keep your primary air control open. The secondary and tertiary air control over to the right is fully open, over to the left is fully closed. But we can see already the stove is, um, is, is, is burning very, very well. What I'm going to do is just close down the uh, primary air. Again, by closing this down, we will lower the flame rate slightly because we're reducing the amount of air that comes into the chamber. When the stove is, is up to temperature, we don't want to burn the stove at a, at a very aggressive, um, fast rate. The, 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 um, the most efficient way of burning wood is at a slow controlled rate, so you'll get a lot more heat into the stove and a lot more value from, from your fuel. Ten, ten, 10 minutes into the burn from the pre-fire. We're still using the um, pre-fire fuel.
Now what we can see here is that even with the pre-fire, our um, temperature gauge um, is sitting, if we can just zoom in on it, we can see our temperature gauge is sitting at the optimum temperature, which is about 180, 190 degrees. Okay, the uh, pre-fire has now been lit for uh, just marginally over 15 minutes, so we're now ready to do our first refuel. We can see the um, temperature inside the box, the, the, the bricks have started to uh, clean themselves, glass is still maintained very, very clean. Uh, we're burning it with the primary closed as we saw 10 minutes ago when we closed it, and the secondary and tertiary still up full just to try and keep the pre-fire as hot as possible. The difference between smoke and flame is temperature, so we want to keep the temperature as high as possible, especially in the early stages when we're getting the flue gases hot and the, and, and, and the um, flue pipes hot. So the, whenever we open the, 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 the door, it's always recommended that we just open it very slightly just to allow an adjustment in pressure from the inside chamber. We will see a little bit of a movement of ash when we open the door. So when we open the door, we're again, similar to whenever we light the stove, we're letting the air draw into the chamber, so the fire will burn slightly hotter. So that's us fine there. We can then slowly open the door. The inside of the chamber is very, very hot. Now we want to do this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm obviously wearing uh, fire retardant gauntlets. So I'm going to put two pieces of wood. You can see the wood is uh, less than 20% moisture, which we recommend. And the other piece I'm just going to set to the back. And close the fire door. I'm going to keep the um, air on full uh, for the next 10 15 minutes at that stage once the, the second or, or, the, or the, the, the first refueling wood starts to settle um, I can then slowly start to reduce air to, to the chamber for, for a much more efficient burn. Okay, our um, first refuel wood has been burning now for 25 minutes. We can see we are burning at um, probably just slightly too, too, too fast a rate here, so we, we will be able to lower the um, secondary and tertiary air control. I'll lower it first of all fully closed, and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll find where, where, where we want to continue burning. We can see from the top the jets coming through the cast iron plate. And again, that's where, where we're getting the, the, the high efficiency from. So if we slowly close this down, we can see immediately the control that we have. We can almost turn the stove off or have it burning. It, it'll not uh, necessarily go out, um, but it will burn at a very, very low rate. As gradually, if you are burning at a low rate, a low rate and the temperature does drop too far, it is possible that you could get some sooting on the glass, so we don't want to drop down the temperature too far. Uh, what we'll do is just add a little tiny bit more air into it and burn at around about the 40% setting. That way, with the, the fuel that we've got in, we, we should get we should get at least another hour and uh, hour and ten minutes out of the, 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 the two two pieces of wood that we've got in, which will give us a, a total of a two hour burn time. Okay, the stove is now being burning for, for one hour. Um, we've got it burning at a very, very low rate here, uh, so we can see it's just enough air coming through to, to keep it alive, but we're burning at a very, very um, slow, slow rate of burn. What I'm going to do is just increase the, uh, the air coming through so just you can see the controllability of it. That's the air coming through, and we can see the still getting hotter with the, with the increased air coming through. The 
precision one by horse swim.